Hello my loves, welcome to Elena's Alchemy. For those new here, I welcome you. For those not new here, I welcome you back and I'm so grateful that you are here because I feel like this message is a very vulnerable one. I'm coming to you today from a pretty raw place, not in a bad way necessarily, but I woke up this morning definitely in my feelings because I had some dreams that kind of reminded me or allowed me to reflect on a lot of things that have happened in my life and how a lot of things have turned out. And I wanted to speak a little bit about what a lot of people call, uh, you know, blind optimism or like, <laughs> I gotta say this, my natal son is squaring is in a square configuration with Jupiter in the second house now for those of you who are studying astrology you will have heard very often that this can make a person have blind optimism as we call it like really the world around you falling apart and yet you still are optimistic and that somehow you should temper that because your blind optimism might actually destroy you. You might never grow up or take responsibility of things. And I just thought to myself, you know, I, I woke up and I looked around and I don't, I really, really, really don't mean to brag because also at the same time, I'm by far not where I felt or wanted or thought I would be aged 31 in my life. Um, and by far, there's a huge list, bucket list of beautiful things that I still want to achieve in my life or still want to experience or see or accomplish but I looked around and I just felt so grateful for where I am at and the reminder came that where I am at right now is exactly the result of this blind optimism because this is something that so many people in my life have told me through the years that this is a problem like yeah, you see what you want to see. Or, yeah, you are in a pickle and you better wake up soon. Or you better turn around while there's still time. Or even worse, people have been telling me, there's really no coming back for how far you've gone. And now, you know, you got to live with your fate that you have shaped. Now you got to sleep in the bed you made. And... I, again, really, this is not a bragging. This is just a testament that things do work out. Why? Not because you are some blind optimist who is like, I don't know, you see the problems and you go, oh, the problems don't exist. You don't do the ostrich hiding your face in the sand, right? No, but you see the problems and you decide inside of you, am I okay with going through, knowing full well that these problems are there on the path? Because also, what are the alternatives? And I'm not okay with the alternatives, for example. Or if I choose the alternatives, also knowing full well that, you know what? It is what it is. It doesn't necessarily mean I gave up. It doesn't mean I'm a coward. It doesn't mean I failed. There have been so many times in my journey where I have felt like I have failed. Only for spirit to hold me up long enough so that I can get out of whatever curveball I have been thrown or I have manifested, co-created for the sake of my expansion. And when we are out of that, 
basically for me to see how by far not we, we did not fail we did not fail at all but it was really the darkest moment before dawn and because i grew up in a culture that taught me that the darkest moments before dawn are failures and that's the moment you are supposed to put away put aside your blind optimism and turn around and count your losses and go back because you have failed <sighs> i refused to do that always and i have been called stupid hard-headed by people very close to me even people whose support and people who what they thought of me what they believed of me, of me whether they were proud of me or not it mattered for me very much and it doesn't anymore even though it makes me emotional when i speak about him it. it makes me emotional in regards to the journey i have had and not really in regards to you know what these people think of me and i found also that there is such liberation when you don't live for other people when you don't live to shape other people's view of you and that's interesting because it's not that i ever doubted like that i'm great for example because i just always felt i had this knowing inside of me that there's something great about me just as there's something great about everybody and nobody is a worthless little worm no matter what you've been told no matter what your journey has looked like no matter how many darkest moment before dawn times you've had what the world might be telling you mm, that's the moment you have to realize you actually failed um well i kept going and the fact that i was able to wake up this morning and feel so beautifully grateful to the point it filled my eyes with tears um as the result of not giving up or not believing that this is the end every time i had a breakdown before a breakthrough and i've had so many of them and if you are here probably you can relate but i've had so many of them that at some point i almost gave up actually i did give up a few times but i learned also that it's not really giving up if you throw the towel but then you come back and you pick it up again that's what i did i gave up only to realize i cannot give up on things that i felt i thought in a moment i thought i can live without them but then i realized no i can't they are part of who i am they are my essence they are not a thing that i engage in they are a path that my soul feels it cannot self express without walking those paths so i had to go back and pick up the towel and pick up the pieces of whatever i've broken on my way out from my frustration disillusionment anger resentment and so even then <laughs> i've been told by people mm, you're so optimistic if you think you're going to go back in and fix it make things right but let me tell you when you are genuine when your heart is true when you go back because you really intend to give your best it somehow works out and it works out even better because you giving up in the meantime gave a signal to the universe that no 
I will not accept this path under these conditions. If you want me to go down this path, I need this, 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 and that. I need support in this, this, and that form. And without that being there, I refuse to go down this path. I will take as long a break as it takes until these conditions fall into place. And that's going to be my cue. Universe, God, Spirit, Higher Self, if we are really doing this, you owe to protect me, to shield me, to guide me, to not necessarily make it easy, because through difficulties is how we grow very often, but we also grow through ease. And that's something that I also went ahead to learn in my life. So this blind optimism that we are being told to tone it down because it's gonna destroy us, ride on it. Freaking ride on it. And be proud of yourself. Because everybody else would turn around. But you stayed long enough to see the dawn after the darkest moment. And that doesn't mean you were not scared. Probably until the moment the sun cracked from behind the heels, probably your teeth were, you know, banging on top of each other. Probably you were shaking. Probably you were, your hands were cold and your blood pressure was and probably you were crying and probably you were heartbroken in a way you thought this heart cannot be put back together ever again the way it was and that's true not the way it was it's not gonna get back to that but it's gonna be very different and if you allow it to be without the judgment of oh now it's broken oh now it's altered and if you just allow it to be and you commit to getting to know it anew as if it's a new person where you just give them you don't compare it with anybody else you don't compare it with any before after situation but you just let it be you give it the space you give it grace and you say all right i'm here present unconditionally with you let's get to know you it can take you places where suddenly you have all sorts of people who told you you were crazy and you ought to go back because you are gonna destroy yourself with your foolish optimism now you have all of these people coming to you congratulating you and saying you know what it's really astonishing what you've done with your life <laughs> but you know what's funny they may even ask you how do you do this how do you do that they may even try to replicate it like straight out but what's funny is you don't give a f anymore if they agree if they like it if they think you've done something astonishing with your life or not and <laughs> It's interesting, depending on how scarred you may have been, your first reaction may be to close, to shut the door on them and say, no, fuck off. When I was there, it's like, you were disowning me. And now you even want to learn my secrets and benefit from that path? Like, screw you. That could be your first reaction. This is perfectly healthy, and if you are there... If, you know, allow it. I allowed it for myself. And I was aware in some parts that it even was harsh at times. But I needed to do that. I needed to allow myself to do it. Think about it. In a world where everybody tells you what you are supposed to do, what you should, should not do. What is the good girl, good boy thing to do or not do? I remember until very recently, like having a 
period in my life where I was like, fuck off, I'm gonna be the bad kid. I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be the bad person for once in my life. Just to see what happens. <laughs> and it's funny because if you are here, I suppose we are on the same wavelength. And the truth is, people like us, we can never really be bad. Like, our bad, bad, bad is maybe not answering the phone anymore for some people that have been straight out toxic. You know, to protect our peace. This is our bad. <laughs> you know, other people's bad is like, I don't know, actively going ahead and trying to destroy other people. And us, our bad, like we, how we feel we are taking our blood back is to just set boundaries. And I love that for us. It might sound like I'm kind of like judging separating people from people but I will say this it is a testament of our pureness and it is something that not everybody can maintain after having been beaten down heck no scrap that like killed <laughs> off a million times and having had to resurrect ourselves all by ourselves a million times and each time we come back alive even people have a problem with that they're like oh you've changed and it's like you killed me and now you have a problem i've come back changed <sighs> so this has been a long journey for me and I feel like it's things that we don't talk about because so often we don't want to burden anybody. It's like we keep on going and people just see on the outside that we keep on climbing new levels, keep on seemingly reinventing ourselves, but it's not reinvention. It's just really dying, being rebirthed all the time. It's something so organic. It's not like what we've been taught in the media or even as artists because I'm a, I'm a music artist as well, you know, there's this concept of, let's say, oh, you've done two albums that sound similar, now it's time to get to the drawing board and, like, reinvent yourself. You gotta reinvent your style, you gotta do something different, you gotta... This is all bullshit. The type of reinvention that I'm talking about is really you re-emerging every time different, because there was a process that happened. You don't have to do anything else than just allow this journey to do it for you. And your only job is to just try to flow as much as possible and uh, rehabilitate the broken pieces from all of these parts where you did not flow as well. And there was some friction and there was some breaking and there was some, you know, so some things happen to people and they are insanely hard. Some things happen where you say, why? Like, I'm pretty sure I could have become a great person also without this much harshness in my lessons. I've said this so many times. I've said, I'm sure I could do without that. Um, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know the answer to that. I just know that it is what it is in the end. And uh, <laughs> when you accept it, it starts showing its gifts. It's a very harsh reality to ac to accept that... I gotta accept it. If I am to allow it to show me its treasures, I need to make peace with that. Meaning, I need to lean into it. Meaning, if I'm down on the floor crying, allow it to be so. And I'll try fast, fast, fast to pick up your pieces. Because the thing is, I have found myself so many times in you know, I've put myself into pickle 
situations. And the only thing that saved me, the only thing that made things make sense in the end was that I allowed things to be and that I kept my optimism. Optimism is not necessarily that you, through the harshest moments, are like, oh, it's gonna be great, it's still gonna work out. No, sometimes it is saying, this doesn't look good. This, I don't, I don't know. This is not gonna work. Jesus Christ, what am I doing? And calling on to spirit for assistance. They say hope dies last. Sometimes logic kicks in and hope has no room to breathe because logic suffocated everything. Logic says one plus one equals two and here nothing makes sense. So maybe I gotta give up, strike a different path, anything. But don't believe for a moment the journey is over there. Even when you're saying, this doesn't look good, this is not gonna work. <sighs> it works in the end, just <laughs> through a different detour. And that's crazy to say because in the end you might be looking at your results saying, this is nothing like what I ventured out for. This is nothing what I started out for. Yeah, what you started out for was something that a previous version of you was going for and was aligned with. But in the meantime, you are someone entirely different. And that thing, it wouldn't be cutting it for you nowadays. So, But spirit could see, the higher self could see all of that from above. And could see when she or he has reached this level, this is not going to be enough for them anymore. Hmm. So let me take them on a detour that while on this detour, they're going to be collecting small, small, small things that seemingly are completely unrelated to one another and seemingly don't make any sense. And seemingly they are hard also sometimes as lessons, but when she will have arrived or he, when they will have arrived here, all of this is gonna make sense. And they will look back and they will compare the two paths and they will deep inside, if they have made peace with how things came about, they will be able to perceive and to see clearly why where they are now is so much better than what they started out for. And Often we don't see it because we still operate from programming that says that one was what I needed because this, this, that. If you catch yourself being there, question that. Look for, are all the things that I think, oh, that would have been better because of this, is that are all of these things, things that are externally oriented or are these things where I'm basically outsourcing my power, my sovereignty, my happiness? Chances are, yes. Chances are, it's the things that the world has told you you need. Or they have really embedded into your mind, mindset, belief that that's what I need in order to blah, blah, blah. I thought that in order to have a good life, in order to live in nature, in order to, let's say, live in a house like the one I live in right now, I thought that I needed to have, like, I don't know how much money. I don't even have that much. I have each time what I need. And when I need more, more comes in. Somehow, somehow it works. And I thought to have the partner that I have that I would need to move in specific circles. <laughs> Guess what? Also the partner that I have now, he's not who I had when we first met. And I'm not the same partner he has with the partner he has when we met. It's like 
today we are who we are because of evolution we have made. So it's do you, does it make sense what I'm trying to say? You don't just end up in a place and you're like, that's it, we fixed the job, the this, the that, the partner, the la 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 la. No, a lot of times it's about you land somewhere and it starts developing from there. And then one day you wake up and you're like, you realize, oh, wait a minute, this is it. And of course there's more to come or more to, you know. But you are where you are supposed to be. And you feel that. So, be eternal optimists. Keep going when people tell you to give up. Keep going when people tell you, turn around now or there will be no turning back next. I've been in so many situations where there was no turning back and yes, there was no turning back. And I had to grind my teeth and... and, and clench my fists and sometimes even close my eyes because I couldn't bear watching and go through because you know I heard it somewhere they said the only way through hell is through <laughs> if you stop and you this you stay there forever you have to but that's it you were meant to go through that when you're out of that that's an entirely different story. But that's the thing. Most of the people who are telling you you are blindly optimistic and you're going to fall on your face for it. These are people who don't have the guts to go through this portion of hell for whatever they believe in. I was always looking for a home. Like home being defined as a place where I can be myself 100%. In this sense, thank you guys, because Alina's Alchemy has been my home also the last couple of years. It's so, it tells something that I cannot make such a video on any other platform, let's say on my music Instagram. But I can make this video here because I don't feel like people are going to be like, oh, she's whining again. Oh, you were born beautiful. Oh, God knows, like, even what you achieved, God knows. Did you have rich parents? It's, like, insane. The kind of things that people project on you because they think they know you. They think they know your story. Or, like, I don't know. Oh, it's insane. I have been super protective of Elena's alchemy. I have made sure to not have people from my music past bump on any of my videos because it kind of happened at the very beginning and I had people say insane things. Even down to, oh, it's like, is that the new trend now? It's like, we're trying to make money from that now? And I'm like... What do you think? I've been going off, I've made over 200 videos by now in two years. And just now my channel got monetized. And all of this time I have been running on guidance from my spirit. It's not for who sees my videos. A lot of my videos only get 12 views. And, you know, some of them I go forward a few of them have like 15,000 views and stuff. This is definitely not about, you know, people seeing me or me making like incredible money through that. I'm very grateful though for everybody who chooses to work with me because yes, it does pay my bills. But also other things that I'm doing are paying my bills. And... All of the things that are paying my bills, I do them genuinely. This is not different. But it's so interesting that people project all sorts of things. They think they know your path. And um, thank you guys for never 
never having projected things on me in a way that has made me feel unwelcome on here to come and share uh, from a true space. Thank you for not making me feel like I need to show up as something other than what I am or share watered down versions of what I feel called to share each time. Truly, thank you. So, my beautiful ones, follow that optimism. Follow that optimism because one day you wake up and you feel so grateful with things. And you know if you had followed other people's advice, you would probably be living their lives. And <laughs> for me personally, I don't know. Since I was a child, I had this understanding inside of me that... If I can't, it's it's like, you know, maybe it's interesting. Where I come from in Greece, there was the revolution in the 1800s. Their motto was freedom or death. And it's so interesting because I never related much with the history of my place, Greece. But somehow inside of me, this was an understanding that I had in my life that... Life has no meaning for me if I cannot be free to be who I am, free to choose, free to explore, free to make whatever moves, mistakes included. Um, and that clashed very, very badly with growing up and everybody trying to teach me to navigate this life without making any mistakes. I suffered so much because of people trying to get me correct enough so that I don't make mistakes, so that I don't upset anybody out there, so that I live a quiet, peaceful, peaceful life, like not to be in danger. Probably that was their intention to get me to not put myself in a dangerous position. And a lot of the suffering that I endured was because I went out there and I started making doing life on my own terms. I moved away from my father home alone in a completely foreign country. Um, like, heck, I wasn't even speaking the language so well. And I made so many mistakes in my relationships. I trusted the wrong people. It's It's insane. A lot of like the people in my life tried to teach me to not make mistakes in the sense of don't make mistakes like uh, look, be a good girl don't upset don't say things without measuring them first don't do behaviors that upset others these were considered the mistakes but the real mistakes were things such as giving my power away to other people not setting boundaries, tiptoeing around people, trying to get them to think that I'm the cutest little thing. And I'm not cute. Not always. I can be cute with whoever is inside my circle nowadays. But back then, it's like I was conditioned that my sweetness is something that everybody is entitled to. That my vulnerability and my honesty is something that everybody is entitled to. That was a mistake. When I made these mistakes, still, I had to learn to be okay with it. Right now, I feel even that I'm an open book. My mistakes are mine. And if you feel like I'm saying something and it's the wrong thing to say, go ahead. What are you going to do? Are you going to crucify me with that information that you got? You just got, you know, growing up, I was taught you need to be secretive. Don't tell things about yourself. Don't, you know, or just say the right things. And I'm like, this is all insane. But anyways, 
I have reached the point where I feel like I'm I'm being who I am and it's like if you want to take this information and try to harm me with that you can't I have given you this information what are you gonna do with it what are you gonna do to me that has not been done already to me and that I had to revive myself from it a million times already I've had to heal my heart a million times already from people like you, from people who would take this information and try to harm me using this information as a weapon. I'm not the broken one. You are. So understanding these kinds of things and understanding where it's like mistakes, non-mistakes, or all right, mistakes, but okay, we had to do that because we had to learn how to put ourselves back together. We had to learn that we have this ability to put ourselves back together. We had to learn of the restorative power inherently found within us. And this is something that scares people who tiptoe around life scared of making mistakes scared of being broken down because they don't believe in their ability to put themselves back together so that's why they don't practice blind optimism that's why they turn around when it gets dark that's why they give themselves, they give their power away to someone else to appease someone else, to make sure that the other person doesn't feel threatened or, or uncomfortable and turns away and potentially, like, I don't know, slashes them. These are things that as women especially, but I'm working with, with young men also, I see this, it's insane how men are also suffering from the same things in so many ways. But especially having had to, you know, as a young woman to navigate these things. It's been very enriching as it has been life taking and life giving. <laughs> and I believe that men are also undergoing through this alchemical transmutation process of coming to their own power as well because raw force is not power necessarily the power of men has been taken away from them as well and i feel that they are coming to experience things very similar to the ones that us women have been experiencing in order to come to their true power as well because power is like how do you wield the power So, let me tune into anything else that I wanted to say here before I close this video too early. Because I do that sometimes and then I'm like, oh, I wanted to mention this and this and that. But that's it. As I've said, I'm genuinely doing these videos. I don't come on here prescripted. I surely have sometimes my notes. But it's not something that I plan and you guys have empowered me to be able to do this because I don't feel like I have to come on here and be perfect. Thank you once again. So yeah, bottom line, I guess this is, and I feel so much lighter for, for sharing this aspects of my journey with you because I feel like for the longest time these things have been things that I've kept to myself and um, sometimes people don't know how much you, you've been through and I guess it would be impossible to tell another how much we've been through because what we are going through it's not so much about what happens it's about how we processed it because yeah because of how we processed it so it matters, it hits differently to us. Um, but this is the message. 
It's not blind optimism. It's the knowledge that you have a path and a purpose. And so often when we feel divinely guided and we just go, we keep on going, despite things looking grim, despite things not making sense based on logic of people who try to live their lives and come out of it unscarred, which is impossible. I guess we just understand that you cannot go through this life unscarred and there's either staying where you are at or taking the chance to go out there and walk a path even if it's not perfect, not from the start, not for a very long time, sometimes maybe not ever. Walking a path that is not perfect, but feeling like, I feel the guidance, I feel the calling, I have to do this, I have to do this. I threw the towel and then I had to come back and pick it up again because I feel like life has no meaning without me doing this. That's something that some people cannot understand. If you are so blessed to have had a passion like this that you follow to the point that people say you are blindly optimistic and you should turn around because you're going to fall on your face, (laughs) keep at it. You found something that a lot of other people will never find, probably. And you need to understand that you cannot listen to others. You have to do it your way. I love you all so much and I wish you a beautiful, beautiful weekend. And I'm gonna go ahead. I have to prepare quite some readings for you guys. It's a beautiful day to do that. It's almost rainy, but not as rainy as yesterday, which means I can do some of your readings now and I can pop out for a nice little walk in the forest and then come back in and continue. I love you all. I thank you. I'm super grateful for so many things right now, but I'm super grateful that I'm able to also do this work with you guys. Thank you for every single person who has entrusted me and booked tarot readings, Um, energy healings energy healings I'm taking a break from right now because I have a lot of projects that I need to pour my energy into but tarot readings and channelings they are available you can find them on my website normally as always and I have my lowered prices as well so thank you to everybody who is trusting me to look into your situations I do not take my work lightly whether I'm doing psychic readings, whether I'm doing music, whether I'm doing whatever. It's just how we are. Some of us, we are like that. And we don't take our path lightly either. So sometimes when people tell us, oh, you're just going blind, kind of like you're a fool. This feels like such a freaking insult to our bones. But going ahead, walking the path and seeing that Whether these people were there or not, I made it through. You made it through your toughest times. So in the end, it doesn't even matter what they... It's not about them. All along, it was about you running on that blessed, wonderful energy that animated you from the inside to go down a specific path. And that's all that matters. And that's all you're supposed to follow. Have a beautiful one. I will see you soon again. Goodbye for now.